The Attorney General of the United States, Jeff Sessions, joins us next for an exclusive interview. Stay tuned. We've had a day to process the details as they've emerged, but the acquittal of Kate Steinle's killer in San Francisco grows only more inexplicable. Jose Zapata shot Steinle as she walked with her father on a pier in San Francisco. There's no doubt he did it. He admitted doing it. And there's no argument that the shooting had no justification at all. She was walking with her father. Nevertheless, the man who did it was convicted only of illegal gun possession. Meanwhile, the only reason this happened in the first place was because San Francisco, like many other cities in this country, is a sanctuary for people here illegally and as a city views U.S. immigration law with contempt. So what is the Trump administration's response to all of this? We're joined now by the Attorney General of the United States, Jeff Sessions. Mr. Attorney General, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Tucker. So before I ask you about Kate Stanley, I, I feel duty-bound to ask you at least one question about... Uh, the charges we saw today filed against General Flynn. I know you've recused yourself from the investigation, but you were part of the transition team during which time he was working, in effect, for the Erdogan government as a lobbyist. He hasn't been charged uh, related to that, but it, it's striking. And I'm, my simple question is, did anyone know that he was taking money from a foreign government to forward their aims in the United States? Well, Tucker, you know, this is part of the special counsel's uh, investigation, and I don't think it's appropriate for me to comment on that now, and uh, we'll just have to see how those cases go. Okay. Well, with that, I, uh, I won't keep trying. Um, so, the, to the Kate Steinle thing, you're, what, what's your initial reaction? What was last night your initial reaction to the not guilty verdict on the Well, murder. it was such a uh, sad event. I've gotten to know Mr. Steinle and the son and talked to Mrs. Steinle um, on the anniversary of that death uh, a few months ago. Uh, so it's a personal thing with me. Uh, I would just say that it's one of the most tragic stories that anyone could have, and I'd be holding your daughter in your arms like that. But the fundamental question we've got to deal with, and it's time for this country to get its head on straight. Uh, these cities should not be protecting criminal aliens, right. people who come into the country unlawfully, then they commit another crime, and then they hide that individual and don't let them, uh, as they did with Zapata, uh, be turned over to the ICE officers so they can be properly deported. So the, the killer, and he is the killer, is now being deported? Uh, that will be his ultimate uh, fate. We are confident and we are going to do everything possible to ensure that happens, although there are some potential other charges that could be brought against him. And before being deported and released, uh, we think he should face every charge that is proper to be brought against him. And you can be sure our Department of Justice is working right now to, uh, to bring any charges that are appropriate. One warrant has been uh, released on him because he has violated his terms of release uh, in a federal, his prior federal conviction for uh, returning to the country unlawfully. So he's got one warrant we know that's uh, already outstanding that would hold him for more prison time. So he was able to shoot and kill Kate Steinle because officials in San Francisco released him from jail um, despite Justice Department requests to hold him for deportation. So that there's a clear connection between the sanctuary city policy in San Francisco and the murder of this young woman. And yet those policies are still in place in San Francisco and in an increasing number of cities around the country. And the federal government seems impotent in the face of that, doesn't seem to be able to do anything about it. Why? It is a very frustrating situation right now. Uh, I would just say the federal government had uh, this individual, was holding him and going to deport him, but San Francisco asked, put a detainer on him, basically, and we turned him over to complete the sentence there, and they refused to turn him back over to us, released him into the city, and that's how this happened. So uh, uh, the federal government uh, and President Trump is crystal clear. We are doing everything possible uh, to uh, re get these cities to reverse these policies. We do not believe they should receive any money uh, that they are not lawfully entitled to uh, uh, under uh, the uh, grant 
procedures of this country, and we're going to work hard on that. We're facing uh, an incredible legal obstacles at this moment, but we're confident, and we will continue to fight on appeal. We're confident the Supreme Court, if, if not the lower courts, will rule eventually in our favor. But right now, you get a nationwide injunction. You file one of these lawsuits before a favorable judge, one of 600 in the country. You pick a, a judge, you file the lawsuit, and and then they issue a nationwide injunction stopping the entire federal government for enforcing its laws. Well, and I'm really, uh, we've got to fight this and we will. I mean, there's precedent for this going back 50 years and more where various cities in the South ignored federal law and were made to obey it because it's federal law. So if you can ignore immigration law with basically impunity and get one of the 600 federal judges you mentioned to ratify your, your decision, then why is any federal law enforceable? Well, it's just uh, amazing to me why any city would not want to rid itself of criminals who are also in the country illegally. Why would they want to maintain them in this country when they're committing uh, additional crimes against the right. peace and dignity of the city? So uh, I think we need to keep the pressure on them. I urge them to reverse these policies, and we will withhold any monies that we can lawfully withhold but, but, uh, from them. So that's, that's my question, though. I mean... You all have been saying that. It, even there were some Democratic politicians two years ago when Kate Stanley was murdered who said the same thing. And nothing has changed, and they've become even more flamboyant in their defiance of federal law. And so is there nothing that the, fed, the feds can do unilaterally to try and bring them into compliance with federal law? We are seeking a, a expedited review on appeal. We expect to win these cases, and we expect that these cities and jurisdictions will lose federal dollars as a result of it. Congress could help us. Uh, we've got good legislation in the that passed the House, the Kate Steinle bill that increases punishments, and we have a, a sanctuary cities bill that would help us a great deal. They're being stalled in the Senate, uh, but Congress really needs to pass some legislation. And that would be a tremendous benefit to so us. So why, I mean, you're uniquely positioned to answer this question since you spent decades in the Senate. On what grounds are they being stalled in the Senate? Who would stop a bill designed to prevent crimes like this, and why would that person do so? It seems like to me it wouldn't take five minutes uh, to pass the Kate Steinle bill that passed out of the House with a good vote. Uh, it shouldn't take any time to pass additional legislation that would provide greater incentive uh, and greater pressure on cities who are failing to cooperate with the federal government in basic immigration law. Right. So, yes, I don't see any basis for not moving this, and would love to see them move it. They've got the tax bill right now, but as soon as possible, I'd like to see this legislation be advanced in the Senate. You'd think lawmakers would care when the laws they make are ignored, but I guess not. But Mr. Attorney General, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Doctor. The only reason this man was able to murder Kate Steinle, of course, was because San Francisco was protecting him from deportation despite five prior deportations and seven felony convictions. Ryan Eller is executive director at Define American, and he joins us now. Mr. Eller, thanks a lot for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tucker. So what's the lesson of this? You know, this is a, a real tragedy, and I, I can tell you, as a, as a person of faith, uh, we mourn the loss of everybody who dies at the hands of violence, and, and I hope the whole nation continues to pray, as I think uh, Attorney General just uh, said he was, for the family of, you know, Kate uh, Steinle. I think there, there's a lot of uh, lessons to be learned uh, from this. I, I think it's a legitimate conversation to have about our criminal justice system. Uh, I think where we start getting into uh, really troubled waters is uh, when we, you know, talk more about uh, sanctuary cities and relationships between local governments and federal governments and somehow make this more about immigrants and immigration as opposed to this really tragic and uh, unfortunate case. Well, I mean, but this case was specifically about immigration. This was someone who'd been deported from the country, country seven times, five times rather, but convicted seven times of felonies who shouldn't have been here and was only on the street because the city ignored the federal law and the request from the Obama administration's Justice Department, by the way, to hold him. And so, I mean, it actually wouldn't have happened with different immigration policies. So you don't think that's fair uh, to draw those connections? 
Well, here's what I do know. I, you know, uh, I'm a follower of Scripture, and in Leviticus it says, treat the immigrant uh, as a citizen among you. And if the Attorney General wants to uh, bring charges and follow the letter of the law, it seems to me that this person has, uh, you know, had due process and gone to court, and a jury has made some decisions in this case. Uh, Wait, just, just to, to be clear, do you, are you suggesting that the federal government ought to abide by the laws spelled out in Leviticus? No, I'm suggesting that the federal government would like to treat this person according to the laws within our land, that would be fair. And I think that that's what we expect within our justice system. What I would also suggest, though, regarding your point on sanctuary cities, is that all of the empirical research says that cities with sanctuary policies are actually safer. Actually, the, I, did, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> the empirical evidence does not uh, say that. And I'll, I'll, I know that this isn't your area, so I'm, I won't attack you for it. But in fact, that's, that's wrong. Um, and there's no evidence that a sanctuary city, well, actually, this has been studied, and there's no evidence that, that sanctuary policies make a city safer. In fact, there's some evidence they make them more dangerous. But the point is, look, I don't understand well, why religious figures, clearly yourself included, would sure. encourage municipalities to ignore federal law when the, I, I don't see why that's why that's your role actually as a as a faith leader and and if it's okay for people to ignore this federal law why is it okay for them to ignore gun control laws or laws about paying your taxes I when did clergy get on the side of ignoring the law I don't see any precedent for that in the New Testament do you oh absolutely I, I think if we view the law as unjust and is marginalizing particular communities, sure. But the issue of sanctuary is fundamentally about asking the federal government to do its job and local governments to do its job. I don't care whether they call it sanctuary or not. I, frankly, Tucker, prefer that we use that term in faith communities and not local governments. I pay my taxes as a citizen to my local government to protect local taxpayers, and those taxpayers include undocumented Americans, some of whom are now, unfortunately, afraid to call the police if they're being abused or if a crime's being committed uh, on them because they're afraid of deportation. The and people who are here illegally. I, I wish you showed as much concern for the people who are here legally, who were born here, who abided by the rules, who came here legally. I don't understand the emphasis, the, the total emphasis, on people who are breaking the law over and against people who are following the law. I think it's bizarre, actually. Well, well you know, I mean, you're, you're, I think, trying to make people criminalize when actually being in this country without the proper authorization yeah. is not a crime. It's a civil offense. Right. Okay. Uh, and um, so I'm, I'm, I need to be clear about that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Tuck. Senator Republic